In a previous video, we saw that if you forward bias a PN junction, which means you connect the positive uh, terminal to the P type, then our PN junction conducts current from P to N. But if you reverse the battery, if you reverse bias it, that is you connect the negative terminal to the P type, then the diode doesn't conduct. Of course, a very tiny current flows through from N to P due to minority charge carriers, but mostly it doesn't conduct. Well, in this video, we're going to go a little bit deeper and explore the subtleties involved in the mechanism of the charge flow, both in forward bias and in the reverse bias. This will be extremely important later on to truly understand the mechanism of a transistor. So let's begin. Let's start with forward bias. We've seen that if the forward voltage is roughly around 0.7 volt, if you reach 0.7 volt, a heavy current flows over here. The holes migrate into the N region and the electrons end up migrating into the P region. But here's the big question, what's really causing this current? Why are the holes moving there and why are the electrons moving over here? Now, since we have two kinds, we have holes and electrons moving, it'll be a little bit difficult to keep track of everything. So let's pause this animation for a while and let's only concentrate on one of them. Let's concentrate on the holes. The electrons will then be similar to each other. So here's the question. What's causing these holes to migrate to the N region? What's causing that? Well, I should think of it this way. Let me just concentrate on one hole and show you what I should think. So if there's a hole over here, I would, I would think like, you know, there's a positive charge over here and that pushes the hole. There's a negative charge over here that pulls the hole, negative terminal that pulls the hole, and as a result, the hole starts moving from P to N very nicely, and that's what's causing the current. Simple, right? Guess what? That's not true. That's not how it works. This is how mo conduction works in conductors, maybe, but not in a forward by our semiconductors. And here's the reason why. Remember that even before we attached the battery, there was a depletion region formed, and in that depletion region, there was an electric field, a strong electric field over here, and it was this electric field that was preventing that hole from crossing the junction, right? Because it is acting like a barrier, it's pushing it backwards. Well, guess what? The battery is only supplying the hole enough energy to overcome that barrier. At 0.7 volt, it barely gives it enough energy to overcome the barrier. It doesn't have any energy left after it overcomes, it doesn't have any energy left to go all the way to this side. That's not possible. So what's really causing that current is the big question. The answer is diffusion. You see, because there are a lot of holes on this side, there's a high concentration of holes on this side, but there's very low concentration of holes on this side, this difference in concentration makes the holes go from here to here. This process is called diffusion. So it's the diffusion that's driving the holes from here to here, not because they're being pushed by the battery. Same story for the electrons, because you have high number of electrons here, less number of electrons here, that's making the electrons diffuse from N to P. So diffusion is the reason that's happening. However, there's another question now we can ask. You see, diffusion only, diffusion only happens as long as there's a difference in the concentration, and that's happening right now, makes sense. But as time passes by, as more and more holes diffuse from P to N, don't you think that the number of holes, the concentration of the holes here would increase and the concentration of the holes here would decrease? Wouldn't eventually the concentration of holes equalize? And if that were to happen, diffusion would stop because there will no longer be a difference in the concentration, right? I mean, that's what would have happened if you had a gas in a room. Initially, the gas would diffuse all the way until it has filled up the entire room and then there would be no more motion, on at least on a macroscopic scale. So why doesn't that happen? If that was to happen, then the diffusion would have stopped and the current would have stopped in the, in the circuit, but that doesn't happen. The current doesn't stop. So what's happening? What's going on? Well, the answer or the key to understanding this is recombination. Recombination. The recombination is what makes sure that the diffusion never stops. And here's how it works. You see, when the holes diffuse into the end type, don't think, so again, let, let me think of this hole again. So when this hole diffuses, we can get rid of this electric field. <laughs> Let's forget about this field now, it's not there, okay. Once this, hole's dif once this hole diffuses into the N type, don't think that the hole will keep moving due to the diffusion. It can't do that because there are a lot of electrons over here. And as a result, even after traveling a very tiny distance, there's a very good chance it'll recombine with the hole and it'll be destroyed. 
Another way to think about this is that the chance of a hole reaching all the way till here is extremely tiny because it has to or it has to cross so many electrons. There's a very good chance it'll just recombine somewhere over here. So if you look at the concentration of the holes on this side, this end, the hole concentration will always be minimum. There'll be a minimum number of holes over here, simply because due to a lot of recombination, holes have a very tiny chance of reaching over here. But we can say the same thing about electrons, right? Electrons also have a very tiny chance of reaching over here, and therefore there'll be minimum number of electrons on this side, which means there will always be a maximum number of holes on this side. Does that make sense? Maximum number of holes. And guess what? As we move from the here to here, we will see the, the concentration of the holes gradually decreases. Gradually decreases. And this concentration gets maintained. It stays that way. It doesn't change with time. It doesn't change because of recombination. The number of holes over here can never increase because the chances of holes reaching over here is very tiny. Number of holes over here cannot decrease because the chances of electrons reaching over here is very tiny. And the same thing you know, works out throughout the entire region. And because this difference from here to here gets maintained with time, diffusion can never stop. So what's really causing this forward current in this forward bias is the recombination. And that's why in some textbooks or in some articles you would see that they actually call this as the recombination current. Because if the recombination was not there, if electrons and holes were not to recombine with each other, then the concentration would have equalized and eventually the, the current would have stopped. So the forward current is due to the recombination. All right, one last thing could be what happens to these holes when they eventually reach? I mean, yeah, uh, some of the holes eventually do reach at this end, right? So what happens to these holes which make it all the way over here? Well, remember, there are electrons in this metallic contact. And as a result, the electrons get sucked in over here and the hole gets destroyed. But because this, part, this, this metallic contact lost an electron, that pulls an electron from here and that ends up pulling an electron from here. And that's how all the electrons get pulled one by one, and so that's how the current even flows in the external wire. And eventually, an electron gets pulled from here, that pulls one electron from the covalent bond over here, which makes a hole at this point. So one hole gets generated over there which means for every hole that is lost over here, one hole gets generated over here, and that's how the story continues. So long story short, in forward bias, it's the diffusion that's causing the flow, and the diffusion never stops because the concentration never equalizes because of the recombination effect. All right, now let's talk about the reverse bias. You see, because the negative terminal is connected to the P side and the positive connected to the N side, uh, what happens is the depletion region widens, and as a result, a strong electric field is present in this depletion region, which means diffusion almost stops. However, the minority charge carriers, for example, the holes in the n-type, again, let's concentrate only on one hole, <laughs> the minority charge carriers, if they ever reach into this depletion region, then notice due to the electric field, they get accelerated, and that causes a current in the external circuit. So there's a very tiny current flowing from N to P due to the minority charges. But here's the thing. You see, this current is pretty much independent of the voltage. I mean, even if you increase the voltage, the current doesn't change. Pretty much it remains a constant. And that's what I wanna talk about over here. Why is that happening? Well, over here, notice that since the hole is inside this N region, which is a lot of electrons over here, as the hole is moving, there's a very good chance that it recombines immediately. And as a result, what's happening over here is this hole is recombining, and then somewhere else, due to thermal generation, that hole is coming back. Again, it might recombine, and again, due to thermal generation, it comes over here. So don't think that the hole just gets swept across very nicely. No, 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 it spends a lot of time over here. In order to get swept across, we need the hole to get thermally generated in the depletion region. So suppose that the hole recombines, and then maybe, maybe, by chance it gets thermally generated over here. Once it gets thermally generated, then it gets swept across. And so in order to have a current, we need thermal generation happening right at the depletion region. Now imagine, due to the thermal generation, we have five holes being created per second, as an example. 
five holes being created per second. Then we'll see that all these five holes will get swept across, and as a result, we'll have a current due to these five holes. But if we were to increase that voltage, if we were to increase the strength of this electric field maybe, then the holes would accelerate more, true, but if there are only five holes being generated per second, don't you see that it will still cause the same current? Because current by definition is the number of charges flowing per second. The number of charges flowing over here, the number of holes is still the same, five. So you see, even if the holes are getting swept faster and faster if you increase the voltage, the current pretty much stays the same because the current is the number of holes that are being swept across per second. So if you want to increase that current, then what you need to do is you have to increase the generation happening over here. And that can either be done by increasing the temperature, because if you increase the temperature, there are just more chances of generation, and as a result, more chances, there are more uh, carriers will be generated over here. Or maybe you could shine light. We'll talk about it in other videos, but you can shine light, and again, you can increase the charge carriers over here. But whatever it is, the long story short, the, the current over here is not driven by the voltage. It's only driven by the generation effect. And it's for that reason, this reverse current is often called as the generation current. It's often called as the generation current. So you see, the forward current, so this is in forward bias, forward bias, the forward current is usually called the recombination current. This, this allows the diffusion to happen, and the reverse current is caused due to the generation. The generation is what causes that in the reverse bias. And this is pretty much independent of the voltage.